Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna transform small studio space into another world. Today, this little studio is gonna turn into the inside of a barn. Now, when you have a small studio, you have to learn to adapt and be creative to make it work because your goal is to create it, make it look like a different area and a bigger space than you actually have because this studio is not very big at all, but we can create some very cool looks and illusions within this space. And that's kind of what the goal of this video is, is yet again showing you what you can do within a small studio. So you're gonna end up with something like this. I think that's pretty cool. It gives a great illusion and you can't really tell where it was shot. Was it shot in a barn? Was it shot in a studio? Gets hard to tell and that's the goal is being creative within your small studio space and making it work. So let's get into this time lapse and get going. That time lapse was pretty cool. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. All right, as I say, this isn't the biggest setup in the world, but it's not the biggest studio in the world either. I've seen a lot of tutorials on working in small studios that a lot of the professionals do, and they're in a big warehouse and they cordon off an area to work in. It's cool, the problem is, they have 40 feet of ceiling. I have seven feet. So in order to get my lights up and over the top of the model's head, the only way that's gonna happen is with having the model lower down, preferably sitting or even sitting on the floor. I can do full body shots and everything down in here and I've done that quite a bit and I've even shown images of that in the past. But the point is that these photographers will work in a 12 by 12 area, constrict themselves, that's cool. But the lights up above the model's head. Well, that's unrealistic for a home-based studio because most home-based studios are only an eight-foot ceiling. Some people have the luxury of having a cathedral-type ceiling and they have more height to work with, and that's great. But for me, this is what I have, this is what I work with, and this is how I function. Now, as you saw, I put some black up on the side there. That black is simply to stop the light bouncing around. In a small studio, the light just bounces around the room, ceiling, walls, floors, whatever. That's why I went with a lighter gray on the wall so it's not gonna color cast onto the models. But I put black up on both sides to reduce the light bouncing around the room. Now to light this, I went with a beauty dish with just a diffuser panel over the front and you can see it's just over my shoulder here. And it's just feathering. It's not hitting directly onto the model. It's just feathering so I'm just catching a bit of that light. I wanted that little harder light look for the barn type scene as the light is coming through uh, some smaller windows and stuff like that. The effect is pretty cool. Now, the setup, as I say, as you saw, it's not huge. That uh, background of the wood wall would be so much better if it was a lot bigger than that. But that's what I had, that's what I worked with. Now, I can extend my background and the top in Photoshop to give me that little extra height. So if the model's really cramped at the top of that, I can pull it up. If I've shot a little wide and have bare wall showing, I can fill that in in Photoshop with the same wood wall. But ideally, you wanna get a big enough background for that, and having one that would fill that back wall up to the ceiling would be fantastic to give me more flexibility. But this worked. Hay bale, spread out the hay. Now, I did it with the wood floor that I have in the studio, so any of the wood showing through, it still works for the barn look. Now, I could have put fake grass down there and made it like I'm on the outside of a barn because I have a couple of big rolls of really good quality artificial grass that I've used in quite a few shoots. I could lay that down and now we're shooting outdoors, but I'm indoors in the studio, which is very cool. So as I say, the lighting was very simple. It was just a one light set up here. I am getting a bit of bounce in and around the studio, but I've shot enough down here. I know how it works. I think it's quite cool. Now, I will show you some pictures that I did from this, and there is a surprise model in here. See if you can spot the model. Now, obviously, I'm the main model in this. I also wanted to show you how you can do 
self-portrait work like this. I will be doing a video later on how to do self-portraits, how to focus, get the lighting and all that stuff set up. But this was basically a self-portrait that I did for myself, for you guys, for YouTube on this setup so we can use our imagination and transform a small studio space into this. So without further ado, let's check out some of the images I created with this little set by myself. I think that effect's pretty cool. Hard to tell what size studio that was shot in. I could have shot that in a hockey arena. You can't tell. And that's the goal, is to be able to use what you have and to create some phenomenal looking images. Surprise model was pretty good. Don't often get her in on set, but this time it was a bonus. All right, so until the next time.